And this is the seed we are sowing in tears that we may reap in joy. Hallelujah. And so as we examine the word, God is going to be pointing some things. This night is not the night to look at somebody and say, thank God he's hearing. No. Everybody is going to, the Bible says, to your tent, O ye Israel. There are certain times in the nation of Israel when a fast is declared, every family will go back and re-examine themselves. That was not the time to say, this family, what did you cause for us? No. Every family. So tonight is a retreat. You and your family. He said, as for me and my house, not my neighbor's house, leave your neighbor first. As for me and my house. Hallelujah. As for me and my house. Colossians 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. He said what? Set your affection on things above and not the things in the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then ye shall appear with him in glory. Verse 5. These are the weights. Mortify therefore your members. In other words, deaden. Declare them inactive to these things. Which are upon the earth. One, fornication. Uncleanliness. Inordinate affection. Evil desire. And covetousness. Which is idolatry. It says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the sons of disobedience. Hallelujah. Verse 8. This is where the examination starts. I like all of us to read it. Verse 8. One to read. But now ye also put off all this. Number one. Stop. Wait number one. Anger. The Bible says the reason why Moses. Do you know? Please follow me. When God called Moses out. God never told Moses he was going to die on the way. The prophetic destiny of Moses was that he was going to lead the nation of Israel from Egypt, the land of captivity, into Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey. Did God say it? Did Moses get there? So it is possible for the character of a man to change the prophecy of God over his life. Hallelujah. God called Moses, but Moses could not enter. You know why? It was anger that stopped Moses from entering. And the Bible says there is a journey, there is a prophetic destiny in Christ. But that certain manipulations of evil spirits can come upon a man and rob him of a prophetic destiny. Hallelujah. Anger has killed and cheated many people and many families. Hallelujah. When a man gets angry and carries whatever is close to him and uses it on another person and then you find out that the medical bills of that person is 100,000 you are certainly not going to have a happy 2013. Correct? Two minutes of self-control would have avoided a tragic loss. Please, are you following me? A little setup in the office that was meant to test you for promotion you react to it in a way that will keep you in that position for the next five years. Anger has cheated a lot of people. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed tonight? I I'm giving us practical reasons so that when we rise up to pray, we will pray. When I was preparing for this message, I said, Lord, you have to help me first. Though. So that having preached, I myself will not be a castaway. Anger. Do you know that anger is an influence of demon spirits upon a man? I know that now we, we have a church where um, most people teach that once you are born again, just go, everything is okay. Let me tell you straight, those godless messages on TV will not lead the church to strength. Hallelujah. You can't say you just came out and I'm born again. Oh God, I give you my heart. That's all. No, sir. That's where the journey starts. It cannot end there. First Peter 1 verse 9 says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. That means that there is, there is still a part of the journey. Hallelujah. 
That's when the Holy Ghost begins to work on a man. So a man was a drunkard for 12 years. Then he came and made an altar call once and we believe everything is over. And then there is a loophole that Satan... See, the Bible says when a demon spirit leaves a man, it says he goes through arid regions looking for where to come and not finding any. The demon will speak. So demons can speak. He will tell himself, let me go back to... He didn't say a man, he said my house. That means the demon is still claiming ownership. Correct? Let me still go back to my house. And you come and find the house swept, clean, but empty. And he said, that's right. You go and gather seven other demons, making him eight, a new beginning. And the Bible says, the current state of that man is worse. Have you not seen certain families? You see a man nice and gentle today. Later on, he's worse than the way he was before the prayer. Because when a lot of people just come and God helps them, they do not fortify themselves with the word. Anger. Hallelujah. Anger is a terrible thing. It was on the news. Sometime, was it last year or year before last? When there was fight in our house of assembly. Did you watch it? We killed in the sun to vote these people and they were fighting. They were not fighting for your sake. They were fighting for their pockets. They don't love you that much to wound themselves. They were fighting to promote the interests of their pocket. That's anger on display. That's the character of a nation displayed in the whole world. I was reading in the newspaper today and there was a fight between the governor of River State and someone else over the road and see how they were exchanging words, very vulgar words. These are the people that are supposed to represent the image of Nigeria. Anger. Being born again does not take away anger automatically. You must first admit that it is, there is a problem there. And say, Lord, help me. For any man that covers his sins cannot be redeemed. Hallelujah. God is re-examining us tonight. Anger. Anger has robbed people of entering their prophetic destiny. Moses speak to the rock and he turned and two point something million people were shouting and ranting at him and he said lord to hell with you and he took anger led him to abort his prophetic destiny and he never entered god said at best i will take you upon a mountain so that you will see it it's painful to see your blessing and not enter it it's better not to see it but that you see it you are this close and then you, Satan will bring you into a tragedy that you cannot enter. Are we blessed tonight? Number two, wrath. This is an advanced level of anger. A reactive one. That's the type you kill somebody later and say, am I the one? There are some people that when they get into that attitude of wrath and rage, you have to love them and leave them alone. Number three. Are we ready? Please read it by yourself. One to read. Malice. Who has another translation? What is written there? Sorry? God bless you, my brother. Hateful feelings. That's a clear English for everybody to understand. Hateful what? It didn't say hateful expression. Hateful. You have not expressed it yet. Hallelujah. So you can laugh with someone. But if there was a way. There was a way. Ah, I hope you like me this. I'll come again. I'll be this 2013. Hateful feelings. Tonight is the night we will we'll be honest with ourselves because after this we are going to pray. We are really going to pray. Hateful feelings. Who would have known that the body of Christ will have to be taught this dimension? Hateful feelings towards one another. You see people laugh in the body of Christ. Oh bless you brother. Oh bless you sister. As soon as they turn in their mind they say die for God's sake. Hateful feelings. 
the proof that you love your brother is that, is that you can defend him when he's not there. Hallelujah. Can your sister trust you when she's not there to defend her interest? Can your brother trust you? Is it not the same believers that sign letters not for others not to be promoted? Please help me. Is it not believers that carry someone's file and sit on it? And smile at us. Ah! But look, you can see what people hate fulfilling. And sometimes the sad thing about it is you don't need to offend anybody. This is what makes it painful. You don't have to offend people. The sad tragedy about the nature of man. That's why God examined the heart of man and said, This is my conclusion. It is desperately wicked. Don't try to do a new research. God has done it. He's telling you, This is the end of my finding. Without the Holy Spirit, including my heart, every man is desperately wicked. That means these tendencies are enshrined in our heart. It may not manifest. It's not because it's not there. Opportunity has not been given. Hallelujah. Who would have known that David can kill a man and take his wife? The same David that refused to kill Saul. He had opportunity two times. He said, I will not do this against God's anointed. But that tendency was enshrined in him. He had not tasted of what royalty looks like. When he became king, he meandered across his balcony and saw a man's wife. There are certain tendencies. You see, this is why every time you are praying and God talks to you, don't argue. If you are praying young or old, God tells you, you have lost in you. Don't say me. The way I love God like this, lie down quickly and start crying. Because this is God's examination. It will take some lifting. There were some men that did not know the power of money until they gave them one appointment. And they say, you mean there can be this level of life? Hallelujah. There are men of, who have never seen some opportunity till they took them to a five-star hotel. And you see, five-star service, who knows whether you are a pastor or not. Part of it is there is a lady, if you are tired and you come, part of the service, executive service. The hotel people are doing their work. And then the man sits down and a lady comes to say, Sorry, I, I, you need any help? Help! And the man says, You mean life can be this easy? Suddenly, you will now see that there are certain encodings that are enshrined. Are you getting blessed tonight? And so God looks at a man and examines the man and says you need to do certain things. I will show you a scripture. Hallelujah. I will show you a scripture that will help us. I really want God to help us. You see, this heart condition, if God does not examine your heart, if God does not purge your heart, God does not bring you to the point where your heart is so purged that you love the Lord with all your heart and you are willing to serve Him. There is a story. Please get it. A king called Ben Hadad. That should be um, Bible students. Kings. Second Kings 8. I want you to read an interesting story. Second Kings 8, 7 to 15. Let me give you a quick background. This was Ben Hadad. He was the king at that time. Hallelujah. An encounter between Ben Hadad and his boy, what you want to call his PA, called Hazael and the prophet Elisha. We'll begin our reading from verse 7. And Elisha came to Damascus. Are you there? And Elisha came to Damascus, and Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick, and it was told him, saying, The man of God is come here. Okay, so this is what happened. Ben Hadad was sick, and it was the culture of kings to inquire from prophets to know what will happen to them. Hallelujah. 
And Ben Hadad sent Hazael and said, Go and ask the prophet, Will I live or will I die? Praise God. So let's jump to verse 10. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto him, That's the king, Thou mayest certainly recover. How be it? The Lord hath showed me that he shall surely die. Hallelujah. So Elisha answered him, Correct? This is where the drama starts. Verse 11. And he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of God wept. Please look up. Hazael, the messenger of the king, an ordinary man, is that true? He just came and he delivered a message. And the prophet said, go and tell the king he will leave. But the truth is he's going to die. Suddenly the prophet turns and starts to cry. And Hazael is asking him, my lord, why are you crying? Let's find out why the prophet was crying. There is a powerful message that we must get. 12. And Hazael said, why weepeth my lord? What was the answer? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Hold on. This was an innocent messenger who just came and the prophet said, I've seen the future of how wicked you will be. You look kind now because there is a level of honor that has not come. Are you following my story? Let's read on. Their strongholds will thou set on fire and their young men will thou slay with the sword and you will dash their children and rip up their women with child. This was the innocent man that the prophet was talking about. 13. And Hazael said, But what is thy servant a dog that he should do these great things? And Elisha answered, What did he say? The Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Syria. Please look up. This was a messenger. Hallelujah. Innocent. He did not know in him is that tendency to be wicked. Hallelujah. And now the king answered him. I mean, Elisha answers him and he's about to run and go back and Elisha starts crying. He said, my Lord, why are you crying? He said, I've cried because I'm seen that you'll be a wicked king. To the extent that you will slay young men and you will bring pregnant women and cut their stomach open and bring the children. And Hazael said, this is too much lie. See, when God talks to you, just believe. Are you listening to me? Because according to scripture, there's no time. That was exactly what happened. He was a wicked king. So God can see somebody who is a nice man and God can say, one day you can be the one who will advocate and stop believers from moving forward. You say, God, me, but I'm just leading Bible study. God is saying, just keep quiet. You do not know the future. When they are crying, lie down and cry. See, this is why some people are not able to step into some blessings. It's not Satan that is stopping them. Are you listening to me? For the sake, God does not want to lose them. So he would rather keep them at a certain level. A man gets a position and sits down and suddenly you see that there are certain there are there are monies from some parastatals that are coming to your office that have no name and no bearing it's not money that is tied to your name it's tied to an office it was happening before you came he said if you don't like it leave it for the next person to come and job and now you are seated there and your family needs help and you know that this is not of god at that point what happens you will now begin tendencies in yourself who would have known that one day you'll be able to sign something and tell a lie and add two zeros to a project money and we rush and give tight with it because men of God have become gullible right now anybody just comes with whatever and we tell them it is well even when God is not saying it because they are feeding our stomachs and they are buying jeeps for us Let's go back to first to um, Colossians. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. Blasphemy. Any other translation? Who has any other translation, please? What does it mean to blaspheme? communication I need to dwell a bit here 
filthy communication yes sir filthy language unprofitable idle non-productive hallelujah did you know that the bible says by your words you are condemned and by your words you are justified many people have brought themselves where they are because of their words hallelujah every time you look and you keep telling yourself I, I move at the money and by I, you keep confessing that thing and you wonder why you are always behind see you know there is there is there is an attitude and it's a false sense of humility we must kick out believers are afraid when they are blessed you are only afraid if you went to the shrine you buy a new car and people say, ah, God has blessed you. And then you say, ah, yes, I, you, if you had a trampoline in the car, not. You see, believers do all kinds of things. You buy a new dress, you are afraid. Let me tell you something. Stop being afraid of the blessings of God. Because many of us, filthy communications. Your child was in school and they say, is it true? You say, God, this thing, Nimab and Seniba, what is the meaning of that? It was the best. Say, I don't want to offend another person's child. Ah! Is it your fault? Hallelujah. They increase your salary. Did they increase it or not? Don't talk as if it, 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 a lot of people are afraid. And you know why they are afraid? Because there are people who are always waiting to receive, like shark. Once you tell them God has blessed, they say, yeah. you, There are people, and this is the year when you will repent from being a nuisance to many families. There are many people who are a nuisance to families. Let God bless them for all kinds of unwarranted visitations. Somebody sows a wicked seed and forces another family to reap it. Are you getting blessed tonight? Wait. Filthy communications. Filthy does not necessarily mean vulgar. Anything that is not in line with the word of God. If God says you are blessed and you say you are not blessed, that's a filthy communication. Hallelujah. You look at a lady and say, Toh, ale kao areo mugani. That's a filthy communication. It's unprofitable. It's ungodly. The Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt. That it may minister grace to the hearers. Hallelujah. And young people, we have a lot of work to do because we are the ones who are most vulnerable. Right now, there's Blackberry. You can ping. There's to go. There's what again? Name them. Twitter, Facebook, what else? All kinds of media things that culture the languages of people and so there is every new slang for every new season madness everywhere you see people calling and incurring curses upon themselves you don't know the origin of the words that many people use and let me tell you something the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake because as you declare so it will happen hallelujah many people have brought crosses upon themselves I will never speak anything that is not in line with God's word. Let me tell you something. This is the year that you will look beyond your present happenings. Begin to declare what God has said, not what you are going through. He said, though you slay me, yet will I praise him. Let the weak say, I am strong. When there was darkness, God did not say, hey, yeah, darkness. He said, light. Peace. Hallelujah. filthy communication this is the year when you look at certain people and your children are not doing well in school and you look at them and say I prophesy if I gave birth to you I prophesy there is an anointing upon you there is a mandate upon you rise up to that which is in your spirit filthy communication hallelujah bless you the lord increase you is well you are lifted people call them church words 
Well, if it's producing results, is that not the most important thing? Do you know there are certain people that if you stay close to them for 10 minutes, your spiritual fire will die down as soon as you leave. You go to visit them, you go back crying and say, why, why did I visit? I wanted to cook. Why did I not just concentrate and cook? In five minutes, they have given ten insults to everybody and anything around them. You see, I am like that. You must change. This is why we are praying. There's nothing like I inherited it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll never use a communication that is not consistent with God's word. Let me tell you a big secret. Anytime you are angry, keep quiet. Because when you allow your flesh to go before your spirit, Cain will rise up and speak before Abel. And you will say things that later you ask yourself. And say, see how I've closed a door for myself because of filthy communications. You had a dream. And in the dream, you saw your family laughing. That's the time to wake up and say in the name of Jesus according to that which you have shown me. You know why God has stopped revealing things to people? They don't respect what they receive from Him. There are many people here. I trust that God will revive dreams and visions in this ministry. There are many people. Some of you, everything that will happen, God will show you. But we, we don't have respect for it. Hallelujah. God is showing you and saying in the month of March, this church will receive a lifting. You get up and say, ah, well, at least I know that it's a dream. And you end. And when it doesn't happen, you say, thank God I didn't say it. Do you know that if you had it and spoken it into being, it would have come to pass. How many people have seen blessings in the realm of the spirit that never manifested in this realm? God is trying to... See, every time you see yourself having dreams, there are many of us you can have the same dream exactly as it happened three times, four times. God is speaking. You are not doing anything. You saw people crying in the dream. You got up and you were laughing. When something happened, you say, ah, and I saw it. What did you do? Are we getting blessed tonight? Filthy communication. Your communication must be consistent with God's word. Listen, Satan has designed the system to force you to speak wrongly. Because you get up, you just get to office and somebody just annoys you. For no reason. You are, and it's that day you did your devotion. And he says, love God and be good to all men. And the first person you meet in your office, you gave him work two weeks ago, he comes and says, Oh God, what did you even say I should do? You say, you mean you have not done it and I'm to submit it. You feel like slapping the person. But that's when the activity of the Holy Spirit. See, I'm telling you, if all we take the Holy Spirit to be is just tongues and falling down, we have missed out a great portion of our spiritual growth. Spiritual maturity is the capacity to absorb pain and stand and say, rather than acting, I let the Holy Ghost direct me. It doesn't mean you are not human. It just means the Holy Spirit is upon you. The people came and spoke nonsense and they wanted Jesus to see. Jesus just kept quiet and was writing. He gave the Holy Ghost time to reveal things to him. And he said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And the Bible says they were convicted from the eldest to the youngest. And they left. Did you know that sometimes being quiet is the greatest victory you can give over certain people? Being quiet. They say, this madam is talking about you. What do you have to say? He said, well, bless God. Let's pray. God is faithful. And the person lives with a disappointment that will warn them never to come back and tell you that thing again. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Lie not to one another. Oh! The church of the living God. Where are you? Ah, uh, I just entered River State now and you are just behind the person. Hallelujah. Someone comes to marry your son or daughter and is already lying. I came back from London. Which London? The Bible says lie not to one another. Maybe it's an arm robber in London or something there or whatever. 
I will talk. Lie not to one another. Hallelujah. Young people lying to our parents. Hallelujah. All kinds of lies. One cultist, one bad boy coming wanting to wreck your life. Your parents, who was that gentleman? I said, hey, one of our fellowship brothers. Lie not to one another. Who is he? Hallelujah. In our lives and in our offices, lie not to one another. Did you know the Bible calls Satan the father of what? The father of... It's a year of, your, of Satan, your father. He's the father of liars. Let truth be that which is spoken. And do you know that many lies that we bring are unnecessary? Have you seen people sit down to Jesus? He would have kept quiet. He just started talking. Who asked you? Started talking. And the thing with lies, you don't need to realize it. Just keep bringing it. It keeps coming. Two hours, you are saying things that are not true. And the people who are listening to you are just discerning. You don't even know where you contradicted yourself. They are still listening. Lie not to one another. There are people who because of their lie, they have joined the heads of families and people who should not be at enmity. And many people, think there are many families because of stories that were not verified. Lie not to one another. What of in church? A lot of people come and tell lies. A lot of people come and say a lot of things. The man went to one bribe and got the contract money. He said, praise the Lord. When the prophet prophesied, doors open, or God lie not to us, what did you do? What is the other part of the story that you have not told us? Are you getting blessed tonight? Lie not to one another. A lady goes to sleep with a manager and gets a job and comes to say, Hallelujah, God opened a door for me. I went and without interview, he gave me a job. What are you saying? Tell us what part of the story you have, you have not told us yet. Lie not to one another. Lie not to one another. It's sad. Many families are in shipwreck. Many men live and travel for all kinds of wicked voyages and they say it's business trip. Oh, I need to be in a business trip. There's a serious assignment that was given. I won't come back after one month. Somebody just tell you, I saw this guy. I saw him around. Lie not to one another. You see, believers trivialize this. One of the greatest strategy of the church is we don't open up these things. Everybody covers everything in the name of Jesus. Um, now, am, I, am I the only one talking here? Please help me. We should approach everything. The grace of God is there. Hallelujah. We are rising and you are not entering the blessing. Lie not to one another. You cannot walk in darkness and claim to be in the light. It's not, it won't take long before it will show. I tell you the truth. That's why you see a man of God anointed on fire. After a few years, he just dies down. Something was happening that nobody knew. And you cannot walk in darkness for too long. Hallelujah. A preacher stands on pulpit. You are robbing members of their money. You are looting, sleeping with every kind of person everywhere. And you say, it doesn't matter. We are the righteousness of God. You see, the thing about God is, God is merciful. The fact that a plate is broken does not mean it cannot carry food on it. But it's a cause for you to go back. Are you listening to me? The glory of God will not leave you one day. So a lot of people do a lot of things and still see anointing. They still see blessing. And they think God is justifying what they have done. God is giving you room to get back. See, a man of the presence will never have a challenge in his life for long. Any man who is truly a man of the secret place. Any woman who is a woman of the secret place. Hallelujah. In our ministry, we made it a culture that at once, every month, at least, everybody must draw and go back and be with God alone. See, some of these priceless things have been lost because we are looking for money, we are looking for title. I every week I don't care what opportunities for ministration 
I was nothing before he brought me. I can't get too busy for him. Many families are too busy. This is why Satan will be wrecking our families we are not seeing. Until the catastrophe gets beyond control. Are we getting blessed? This is the year when we must set aside time. 